we have traversed arrays before. We did it right here to copy. Let's go ahead, uncomment that out. I'm going to delete all this stuff. We're just going to mess around with one array right now. Let's call it A to save some typing. Uh, there is a fast way to change things. If you highlight, I think you can do F2, but I'm going to right click, refactor, rename. So it's Control R to rename. I'm going to rename it to A. And when you hit refactor, watch what happens carefully. Everything that's in yellow highlighted gets changed to A. It's still highlighted in yellow, but that's a way to rename everything uh, really quickly. I don't need copy anymore, so we'll comment that out. So we're going to traverse A. This is the standard for loop again. Start at zero, uh, go less than length, and plus plus I. So this, you will do a lot. This is a very common uh, for loop pattern. And this is going to go through and multiply each number by five. I'm not terribly good at multiplying. I'm going to put small numbers in so I know if it's correct or not. And go ahead and run this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and we multiplied each one by five. So we got uh, one times five, two times five, three times five, four times five, five times five. All right. So that's how to traverse an array. And you can do something with uh, the elements. I could put a print statement in here if I wanted to. One of the most common things you're going to do is search. So what is a search? Let's say we're looking for four. Value equals four. So inside my for loop, I'm going to do an if statement. Okay, so what we're going to do here, inside this if statement, I want to check if uh, value is equal to a at i. So the element at position i, if it's equal to the value, which is 4, then I'm going to print out 4, the value found at index i. Four is found at index three, and let's search for six. No, let's not break it yet. So one, what are we expecting to see? One should be at index zero. Uh, we'll go at the end. What I'm doing is called boundary cases. So I checked one in somewhere in the middle, then I checked at one end, and I'm checking at the other end. And it looks like it works. That's index four. That's great. Everything is working well. All right, so let's get crazy. All right, is there a six? No. All right, and nothing printed out. So we probably should have a different print statement if I don't find it. All right, so, so what happened here? Six is not found. Well, it turns out it's not found a lot because we're checking if position i is not value, we're doing this print statement. It's probably not what we want. Uh, so we got a slight problem. I'm going to have to move this somewhere else, but let's see. If I just take it, well, first of all, I'm not allowed to move too much there. You can't just take an else statement and just drop it wherever you want because it can only follow an if statement. Okay, there we go. So there's an error. I don't know why it didn't show up in red. And you can't just put an else statement wherever you want. And if I delete it, It'll always print out six not found. Even if I put in two, which is found, it'll always print out two not found. All right, so what I need to do, there's a few ways to fix this. If I want to use this index outside the for loop, I'm going to have to declare it 
at the top here. And I'll just go into I, and then I'll make sure I don't declare it in there. Actually, I think a bool would be better here. So I'll do boolean found, so the variable is called found. If that's happening, we'll print that out and found equals true. So meaning that we found it. I'll say if not found. All right, now you can see that the importance of choosing the right variable names right here, because I can read this as if not found, remember the exclamation point is not found, uh, we'll print not found. So here we go. So now we have a nice little uh, search going on right here. What we're gonna do next is turn this into a method. So let's grab all this code, I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna paste it, public static int search. So we're going to have an array, an int value, paste it all in. Okay. So we're not going to print here. Uh, well, we could print. Uh, but what I want to do could say found equals true. Uh, the other thing I want to do, if we find it, return i. So it's going to take that uh, value i and return it. Uh, now Java is going to complain because if you return, you're not running any code and it's going to tell you that's unreachable. Easy way to fix it, just put it up before. All right, so now instead of, or in addition to printing, we'll return false, meaning Oh, no. okay, so why can we not return false? We're gonna return the index, which will tell us what position it was found in, but you can't return false because we agreed that this was not gonna return an integer. So what's a good number to return that would stand in for false? You might think zero is not bad, but you could find your element at index zero. So a zero is not good. Maybe you can choose a huge value, but now if your array is a million, it has a million elements in it, this is not useful either. So the standard choice, sometimes it's any negative value, but negative one's the standard choice uh, for not having it. Okay, so it's still complaining, missing return statement. Logically, if we find it, it's gonna return I. If we don't find it, it's gonna return negative one. However, Java's not sure that this condition is going to be satisfied. So what we're going to do is actually make this a lot more simple. I'm deleting that right there. If we return i, we stop executing this method and we're going to go back up. Uh, so I don't need to check if it's not found. We'll just return negative one here. And we no longer need that variable. So it actually makes it quite a bit more simple. So if we find it, we're gonna return the index. And if our code ever gets to line 41, that means we did not return i, and then we'll return negative one. All right, so let's test this. Good one to use here. Found out index. All right, now how do we get to this index? We're gonna do search, and we're gonna send it the array A and value. Okay. So why is it printing everything twice? Because we have extra print statements in here. So if we get rid of those, that was just to see how, uh, how it was going. So two is found at index one. We search for one. 
1 is found at index 0. Very good. And let's search for 10. 10 is found at index negative 1. And again, that's what we're expecting because that is what we should be returning if we do not find it. Take a break before we finish uh, the rest of this.